Welcome back to this final video in which we are going to show you some additional flight management manoeuvres that the ATR is capable of. We will also look at some in-flight icing conditions and fly an ILS approach. We are on the ground at Nelson, about to depart back to Christchurch. The MCDU has already been loaded with our flight plan showing at the top of the screen. Initially we are going to track 003 to 1200 feet, then turn left to Sailor and Dazza which we need to cross at 5000 feet or below. We then turn left to Idnim, which has a 9000 and below hold down, and then left again to Nesta. The IGIGA 6 Alpha Star for Christchurch has already been loaded, which puts us in a left hand downward position for the ILS 02. We must cross IGIGA 11000 feet or above, CH 412 at 8000 or above, Avnot at 6000 or above, then Urbax, Abdan at 3000 above. All bad is where we turn onto the ILS inbound of 016, which marks an 8 mile final for runway 02. The aircraft is all set up to climb in the VNAV IS to a cruise altitude of 16,000 feet. I'll get back to you after the takeoff. Just completed the after takeoff checklist and are tracking towards our first 5000 below restriction. We will pretend ATC have cleared this requirement for us, so we'll go to the MCDU, find select DAZA, and press clear next to the 5000B. VNAV IS will automatically sequence to the next altitude restriction. We can now select speed manual and wind the speed bug back to white bug plus 10 to increase our rate of climb. Today this will be 150 knots. We will assume that we've been picked up on radar by now, so ATC have instructed us to track direct to Nesta. We'll press the DTO button on the MCDU, select Nesta, and execute to make the aircraft go direct to that waypoint. As we approach the cloud layer we will select speed manual again and increase our airspeed to the amber bug plus 10 knots which is a safe speed for flying in icing conditions. We will assume that we have a forecast that indicates moderate icing in this cloud band and now as outside air temperature is well below 8 degrees celsius we want to select the anti-icing and de-icing gear on from the overhead panel. Icing AOA appears in green on the FMA strip and the icing AOA button lights up in green too. We would normally wait for ice to be detected on the airframe before switching the de-icing gear on, but for the sake of this video we will select the ice accretion checklist on the EWD and complete it as if we already have. Ice accretion checklist. IAS maintain at or above icing bug. Anti-icing confirm on. Engine de-icing on, airframe de-icing on, in flap zero config, IAS maintain at or above icing bug plus 10, which is why we're in speed manual already, IAS and vertical speed monitor. As our performance isn't decreasing, we'll say this is all other cases, and that completes the checklist.
We're at top of climb now, so we want to update our nav aids for our destination. Another way to do this that I didn't show you last time is to click on the RMS button on the MCDU. Select nav, then line select next to the standby frequencies and click them both to swap them to the active side. You can see on the VCP we now have 109.9 for the ILS DME 02 set. Next we go to our heading bug, centre it, then select heading. Select nav source to VILS1, rotate inbound course for the ILS which will be 016. Select the source back to FM1 and confirm LNAV green. The ATR does not currently have automatic tuning or course aligning for precision approaches so you need to do this for every ILS approach. We're at top of descent now and the magenta box next to our altitude indicates the aircraft has captured its vertical profile here at 16,000 feet. The progress screen says we have 4 miles to top of drop with a total remaining distance of 53 miles which matches 3 times 16. We will wind our altitude selector down to 2,000 feet, assuming air traffic control has approved this descent. As our airspeed is sitting at 235 knots, you want to take the power levers out the notch back to idle before tipping over. When we see zero on the PROG screen, select VNAV on the FGCP and VNAV path will show in green on the FMA strip with our next vertical constraint of 8000 feet showing up on the PFD. I've fast forwarded us to Updan now as we make our base turn for the ILS. I've slowed us down with flat 15 and we've turned all the icing gear off. Prior to the inbound turn, select VS mode and check VS green. Wait for the LNAV guidance to line the aircraft up with the inbound course for the ILS. Then centre the heading bug, select heading, change source to VILS1 and arm approach mode. Check lock green, glide slope green and drop the landing gear. below 150 knots, slip flat 30 and call for the before landing checklist. Between 20 and 30% torque will keep you a good 10 knots above the approach speed. Two 
100. Certainly not my finest learning in the simulator, but at least we made it to the right airport and got it in the touchdown zone. Thanks for joining me on this series, I hope you've been enjoying the ATR from Microsoft.